Hello everyone and welcome back once again to the channel. As most of you will probably already know, the latest update that was released for Microsoft Flight Simulator has improved quite some things, but has also broken a lot of things at the same time. Hopefully a patch will be released very soon to get the sim back to its previous state, plus all the added benefits of course that the update brought. But in this video I'm going to show you guys how to fix one of the problems that Sim Update 5 brought upon the sim without having to wait for a hotfix from the developers. If you've encountered this bug as well and this video helped you fix it, be sure to like and share the video. This way the video can reach more people and potentially resolve this issue for a lot of people without them having to spend hours of their days trying to solve it themselves. Also don't forget to do a touch and go on that subscribe button along with the bell icon so you are always notified whenever I drop new content. And the comment section is always open for questions and requests so be sure to head over to the comment section below to give me your thoughts. Now without further ado let's get right to it. So since you are watching this video you probably already read the title and saw the thumbnail. So you most likely already know what problem this video is about. But if you don't, here's some more info. So basically right after Sim Update 5, I tried to load into my favorite aircraft in the sim at this current moment, which is the PMDG DC-6, to do a nice little flight with it. Nothing seemed to be wrong with the aircraft at first glance, but while I was doing the pre-flight checks, as soon as I came to the GPS system, I couldn't get it to work properly for some reason. It just wouldn't turn on, even if all the necessary switches, like the battery switch and the ground power, were in the right positions. What was weird though, is that when I right-clicked my mouse to look around the cockpit, as long as the cockpit view was moving around, the GPS would suddenly turn on, but as soon as I'd stop moving around, it would give me a black screen once again. At first, I thought it might be a bug related to the PMDG aircraft itself, and that as soon as the aircraft would be updated, the issue would disappear. But after a couple of aircraft updates, that never happened, so I decided to check if other aircraft also suffered from a similar issue. And sure enough, every aircraft that was fitted with the default Garmin GPS had a similar issue. Only now the GPS would stay off regardless of the camera movement, and the transponder and radios also didn't work. In the extra 330 it was even worse, and the main displays even didn't work. So because I couldn't really do a good flight in all of these aircraft now, I decided to spend some time in the G1000 version of the Cessna 172. After all, the aircraft that used the G1000 weren't affected by the update, and there was an upgrade available by a working title to make the GPS even better in all of these aircraft. It was in the Cessna 172 that I noticed something different. If I loaded into the aircraft on a runway, which meant the aircraft would already be in a ready for departure state, one of the avionics master switches would always be in the off position and whatever I did with the physical avionics switches on my honeycomb yoke, the switch would just stay in the same position, unless I pressed it with the mouse in the sim itself. It was at this point that I started to suspect that the issue might have something to do with the button bindings on my yoke system, so I went into the control settings and I changed a couple of things and sure enough, the issue is now resolved, so here's what I did. By default, if you have the honeycomb alpha controls, this is the way the avionics switches are set up. And this is the way I have them set up now. And this seems to resolve the avionics problem in all aircraft. So I recommend you look into your settings if you are having the same problem and see which control bindings are used for the avionics in your setup. So hopefully this video has helped at least some of you guys to fix this very annoying bug. There are sadly still a bunch of other problems which can't really be resolved as easily as this, as far as I know. So for those issues we'll probably have to wait a little while longer. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you found this guide helpful be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. If you would like to see more from me you can watch some of my other videos or head over to my Instagram page where I post lots of flight simulator content. For now that's all I've got for you today. Happy landings to all of you and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.